Hi guys, Sabrina from Campbell's Freedom Farm. And I'm about tired of covering up my um, jalapeno pepper plants and other pepper plants waiting for the final harvest. So let's pick these and let me show you how you get dehydrate them so you have them all winter. And um, also I wanna show you, a lot of these aren't ready, they're green still. And what you can do, we get put them in a bowl or you could just cut the whole vine and you could hang it upside down and let it kind of finish until you're ready to dehydrate. So this is a great producing plant. So I'm probably gonna dig it up anyway, but I wanna trim it anyway. So let me pick these and let me take you inside and show you how to dehydrate these because they're all different it depends how thick the wall is on how you dehydrate it so but i'll explain that inside all right now that we're in let's talk about the peppers and dehydrating them before we do it okay there's thick walled peppers and there's thin walled peppers why is that important? Well, because the thin ones maybe don't even need a dehydrator. Okay, in the old farm, we would bring in, we would cut the whole plant and hang it against the walls, the log walls. It was kind of cool looking. The cayenne peppers just dried on their own and we would just pick them as we used them. They're very thin. Now, something like a jalapeno or a um, bell pepper, those are thick walls. What makes them a thick wall? Basically, you need potassium and calcium. It builds a really thick wall. Does that make it healthier? I don't know. I do know though, a red pepper is the most healthiest because it has like 11 times beta carotene than a green pepper. So that's interesting. So I wonder how that compares to like a carrot. <laughs> you know that you need it. Now, I prefer to dehydrate my peppers whole. The reason being is then I'm not stuck with just like little flakes. Maybe I wanna throw a whole jalapeno into my dish. Once they're dehydrated, you have the option of just crushing them. It's so much better, less work. Now, let's talk about how you dehydrate a whole pepper. First thing you're gonna do is break off or cut off the stem. You could dehydrate with a, a stem, but it just takes a lot of room and we do a lot. And then you either poke holes into the skin like this, and that's it. Why? because we gotta release all that moisture. It's like, um, you know, when you put something in the thing, in the microwave, you don't want that steam in there. It'll explode in the microwave. Now I wanna show you something else. Those that don't like the seeds, and I keep my seeds except for the ones I wanna keep seeds for next year. I split it open totally and that way after it dehydrates, I could take my finger and they just come off and I could put them in a different container and um, then you could have just those separate. You should eat the seeds, just know they could add a little heat for the hot, the heat loving ones. And um, basically they're healthy, they're very healthy. So all you have to do, now let's just do these. Let's just put a couple holes, cut stem, and that's it. The cayennes or the ornamental, I have some cute ornamental. Remember the ornamentals. I like whole because you could sprinkle them on top of dishes and it looks really cool. And they're healthy. Um, people said, oh, you can't eat those. Well, yeah, they're loaded with nutrients. The only problem with the little ones, 
they won't fit on here so I just air dry these so all we're going to do is just fill these up poke a couple of holes and just load the trays now how long is it going to take everybody has a different recipe per se for dehydrating some 175 some 250 i'm going right in the middle at um 200. overnight they'll sit in the dehydrator and then in the morning i'll check now what you're going to look for is that it's crumbly you don't want any moisture inside so all right let me um load this up and then i'll show you what it looks like oh wait let me show you one more thing here's a bell pepper bell pepper are larger they're not going to fit on the dehydrator so just cut the top off and you could throw the top as a ring in the bottom same just throw it on there and then basically you're going to take the seeds out so i go like this a lot of people don't do rings i'm not a big fan of the rings so now you have this and all you're going to do is take your knife and take all the seeds off and i'm saving this for next year and then just scrape it and that's off then uh, normally i'm better than this then just cut it in slices like this and then it's ready for the tray that's so simple all right let me finish these and then i'll show you how you assemble them on the tray okay i'm finished now i did have some more trays but i'm not going to use them I'm just going to put these on here. I have a variety of peppers and they're all going on. And remember, if the lid doesn't close all the way, by the time in a few hours, they'll start shrinking down and then everything will sit together. Although mine did. But if yours doesn't, don't worry. Now, the rest of these, you know I'm always into saving energy and... I think we're going to have some really bad times with electric and, ga and gas especially. Just like the lemongrass in the car, I don't want to bake these, but I want them to dehydrate in the sun. So I am going to put these in some I've cut and some I split in half, you know what I mean? And so um, I want to see what the difference of time is. And, um, you know, you could always use an oven, but that really takes the electric. The most important thing is they dehydrate, not cook. So, all right, so I'll see you tomorrow, and I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, the results are in. Our peppers have dehydrated. And let me show you the first test to tell if they're done. Do you hear it shaking? It's basically Sahara Desert. <laughs> Never been there. So these, uh oh, these are just dry to touch. If it wasn't done, it would still feel a little um, sticky almost. You could take like a piece of toilet paper and just push against it really hard. And if it's dry, it's dry. But you pretty much know. Now, the test in the car. We've had rain. It was sunny. I started this video like at three in the afternoon, so it only had a few hours. And then we've been raining on and off, which we needed. <laughs> so these are going to re be replaced with the dehydrator and finished off. Now, how are you going to store them? If you have large quantities, I keep bags, clean bags that have little holes and I put the big ones into here. This was from the pink lady. Remember these start um, germinating inside a lot. Check out that video. 
and the rest I'll put in a loose baggie because I don't want to seal anything in case you know how moisture gets into your salt and it coagulates or whatever you call that I don't like that with the peppers because I these peppers have to last all winter although I grow them in the basement too and now I have these um, garden beds but if you have large quantities I take these cups I'm just throwing them on the ground and I put them in here and these are easy you just reach out of the cabinet and it's ready I poke one or two holes for air to be released and that's it now if you're gonna seal it totally they have those little silicon um, moisture things I put one in the middle and um, it'll keep everything you know dry I throw these in with the salt too but this was it so easy it's a good way to keep your peppers all year round and when you want to use them you could just take it and I don't want to crumble it really crumble it or you could put it in your um, spice or coffee blender and make a powder out of this but I like them whole until I'm ready for that but um this is it Sabrina from Campbell's Freedom Farm dry your peppers and there's other stuff you could dry too and hopefully Monday the ground is dry again and then we could start pulling up the canyas elephant ears and the dahlias and I'll show you how to dig them and store them and also the ones in the pots I'll show you how to overwinter in the basement have a great day.